Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the channel, Morning Castellated News. Now, I haven't made a news video in the past couple of days. The news has started to stack up and there's a lot to talk about today. But anyway, as always, you're new to the channel. Make sure to get down there, subscribe, smash like button, enjoy. I appreciate your support as always. Again, thank you so much. But anyway, Sir Maxman, huge injury update regarding him. Dan Ashwood has set the same for Newcastle. We already knew this anyway, but it now looks like his natural confirmation date. As well as just more stuff to talk about, there's plenty to get into today. But quickly regarding Thursday, again, the under-23s are playing away to North Shields in the semi-final of the Cubs. So make sure you get yourselves that game. That'll be a really interesting match. And quickly regarding the game yesterday, actually, again, the under-23s are coming on the back of a 6-1 defeat to Fulham. I didn't actually know that the 16-year-old Luke Harris has got a hatchet inside the first 11 minutes is actually a Newcastle fan. I mean, just sign the kid up. It's the most obvious sign you can ever make. But anyway, uh, without further ado though, let's get into the news. Let's begin off with a stat, shall we? Newcastle and Liverpool are the only two teams in the Premier League that haven't lost so far this year. I mean, Newcastle and Liverpool, wow. Really testament to how good Eddie Howe's been since he's came in. I know at start had a bit of a bump you up ever since that transfer window's open. They've just been levels above one's key on the trip as came in. The players as a whole, a lot of them have improved under Eddie Howe, which is the most important part. Players like Ryan Fraser, Shelby, obviously Joel Linton, he's the main one. Just even like likes of the cells, they haven't improved an awful amount or craft even. They haven't improved much, but they have improved. That's just testament to how good the manager is and the fact that he's actually getting these players trained and these players are match fit. That's a huge point as well. But that West Ham game... It was a good point. The performance itself, we were just lacking the key players. I think St. Max from Trippier, Wilson, even just one of those three players, I think we had a decent chance of winning the game. But without those three players, we haven't got much of a chance. So the fact we got a draw and played really well in that game as well is just incredible. So fair play. And hopefully things continue against Brentford. Bad news regarding the Brentford game on Saturday. Mike Dean will be refereeing the game. It's all about you. It's all about you. I can't stand Mike Dean. He was tall in that Liverpool match. Bear in mind, his sons are Liverpool season ticket holders. Who thought it was a good idea to make the referee for that game? It's all about him. Ruin the match. Horrible, horrible referee. He should not be anywhere near this sport. An individual player I do want to talk about actually is Joe Willick. He's someone that, at the start of the season, struggled a lot. We all know this. He struggled at big price tag. People thought he was going to be that Kennedy 2.0. Well, the last few weeks or so, he's really kicked on. Again, I was someone that was quite critical of him. I remember Liverpool away Thursday night. End of the game, just walked down the tunnel, didn't even clap the fans off. He's someone that's just, behind the scenes, there's just been something wrong. I don't know what's, what's happened, but someone hasn't clicked. But over the last couple of weeks or so, this guy has just been on another level. Exceptional, exceptional player. And it's good to see. Again, Bruno is not getting the game because the midfield's playing that well. A lot of people seem to be quite... Annoyed, but listen, the midfield's class, so why you change it around? Shelby, Joel Linton, Willick, and Willick, I mean, he's looked a lot better in front of goal, which is the main part as well, because even though he has played well in previous matches, I still feel like he panics quite a lot in front of goal, but against West Ham, he was far better. The goal is the obvious part, but even the rest of the game, he looked like he was going to do something at every chance he got, which is what you want to see from these sort of football players, and long may continue, because he's got ability, that's why we saved him in the first place, and yeah, he's one long-term player I'd love to see do well at the club. Well done to the Newcastle under-11s because they won a futsal tournament. Now, I want to talk about this because I know that some of these lads actually do watch my videos. So, well done. That trophy cabinet mine is starting to get bigger and bigger now. Just wait for a few years' time. Newcastle first team, the women's team, they're all going to be winning these trophies. And this and that cabinet inside St James's Park is going to be loaded. But, uh, well done. I remember playing futsal, actually. It wasn't quite 11. I think I played it when I was about 18. Got to a semi-final, nearly made this in George's Park, but at the last hurdle, some team in Huddersfield beat us, so didn't quite get there. But well done, lads. Uh, keep it up. Let's talk about one of the big ones now. Dan Ashford is set to join Newcastle United. We already kind of knew this anyway, because once he left Brighton, we knew he could have got Newcastle, because he wouldn't leave a job unless he got an R1 in place. It's just common sense, really. It's a huge one to get in, though. Charlie Bennett actually makes a good point. Yeah, I talked about his time at England and Brighton. He's never worked with a budget before. That's the thing. He's always worked with quite limited funds and just worked wonders with them. So imagine what would happen when he's actually given a serious amount of money in the castle. I'm really intrigued to see what players he would actually go for. Would he go for young up and coming players that aren't recognisable in the media or would he go for these big names? I don't know. I don't know what he can do. I'm really intrigued to see what he can do. I mean, 
It's going to be announced at some point now. Uh, at first, he had a gardening leave, so essentially he had a huge amount of time off. You just do what he wants for you, a bit of time just to relax. But it seems that there's an agreement reached where he's going to sign earlier. I don't know when it's going to get announced. I imagine it'll be around about the start of March on Fabrizio Romano's news. I'll take it that it's going to be within the next week or so, next couple of weeks. So again, looking forward to see what we can do in the summer window. The most important part is staying up. But this guy will get stuff done. I believe that this man will get some serious players in. I'm looking forward to seeing how we work as a team now. Graham Jones, Dan Ashwood, Kieran Trippier, Callum Wilson, all these England links. Who else is going to join? I can't wait. But yeah, let me know your predictions down below, guys. Who would Dan Ashwood go for? I haven't got a clue, personally. I know I have talked about this before, but I want to talk about it again. Just how much of a joke the fixtures are coming up. Four matches in 10 days. Yes, the Crystal Palace game is likely to be postponed due to them potentially beating Stoke in the FA Cup, which you would expect to do. Thank God for that. They better beat Stoke, by the way. But what really ticks me off is that the week afterwards, is like an international week as well. Like, why can't we play one of the games then? Like, what, what is this? It's just a farce. How can he play for your away games in seven days, man? There's no thought about the fans whatsoever there. I'm going to spend two days down in Southampton. God knows what I'm going to do for the Chelsea's game. Chances are I'll get a quarter of the Everton match. I mean, it's just my word. It's going to be expensive. It's going to be tiresome. It's just... It's just ludicrous. How can you expect the team to play three matches in seven days, potentially four in ten days? We've obviously got warts here players around. I mean, is there's no thought process whatsoever and that is just oh you know what? There's a little bit of space and let's just dump the matches there. There you go. Screw the fans. Yeah, uh, it's a bit of a rant, of course, but it's just, oh, it, it just baffles me. Southampton away is on a Thursday night. I'm going to travel down on the Wednesday probably just so I can relax on the Thursday. Oh, it's just my my word. Who thought of that? It's crazy. But anyway, I mean, you might as well just stay down, stay down London for a week and just go to all the different away matches. I mean, what's the point? What's the point even going home? Yeah. Anyway, uh... Rant over there, I'm just ticked off because who thought those fixtures would be a good idea? It's going to kill the squad. In my personal opinion, we should just throw the Chelsea game away. Focus on the R3 matches, the Chelsea game, no chance. Just play some of the... Play Gale against them. Just play those sort of players against them. Players I don't play often. Just throw that Chelsea game away. Focus on the R3. Terrible mentality, but one, we're not going to win all four, so we're going to have to throw one of them away. But let's talk about the big one now. Adding some Maxima. He missed the West Ham game due to the power knock. Not wanting to risk him in the match. Newcastle arresting him. Now, it is expected that he will be back for the Brentford match next week. Fingers crossed. Uh, again, I wasn't the first one to come out with this. World of Sport TV has already mentioned this. But again, let's talk about it for clarity's sake in my video. But yeah, it's going to be a huge one. We know in the reverse fixture, the 3-3 free -free draw, he ripped Brentford a new one. And at six point a game down next week in London, it's going to be a huge advantage to Newcastle. This is the first picture I came out. It's a maximum train and his full kit. I'm fair enough. Anyway, a lot of people claiming that was me behind him. Listen, even I zoomed in the picture. To be honest, that guy does look quite a bit like me. But no, uh, maybe one day, I guess. But no, uh, that was not me. Uh, anyway, the main part is there was the fact that he is in the gym training. He's clearly getting himself ready for something, i.e. the game next week. So, yes, I think he will play against Brentford next week. Again, it just seems like a precaution more than anything else. He doesn't seem to be hurt in any way. Mankio, I don't think will play next week. I still think he's potentially only a week or two away. But again, I don't think we're risking for the Brentford match. Other than that, though, I think we'll play pretty much the same 11 we did against West Ham. The target was class. Well, it was class. Dan Byrne, again, he's just exceptional. He's such a good player. Really big fan of Dan Byrne. He is someone that we needed in the centre-half for years now. So, I, I mean... We should have signed him years ago, to be honest. He was a mate Ashley saying we could have got a Percy, but listen, he's here now. That's the most important part. The team is looking good, though. I think we are on track to beat Brentford. This is the league tier at the minute. However, if we lose to Brentford, that's the worst thing we can do because we've got games to hand on them. If we beat them, we seriously screw them over and just completely drag them into the relegation battle. So it's very important we get at least a draw against them. I'm confident we can beat them. I mean, even though we were crap in the reverse fixture, we still got a draw against them. So, listen, we can play well down there. I think we can get the result, especially with how we're playing. But, yeah, that tier was getting very tight now. It's important that Newcastle get ourselves out. We can seriously screw the opposition teams over. But, yeah, I'm looking forward to that game now. Can't we? I've got my ticket. Cost me an arm and a leg. But, listen, I'm going down there. It's the most important part. Finally, we finish things off here. 
a lot of Newcastle fans now due to ticket demands are starting to over charge for tickets. Now, personally, it's people's opinions whether they think that's morally right or not. I'm someone that never does that. Even my West Ham ticket, I just gave away for free. Like, I didn't even sell the thing. So, I, I it's people's choice, really, and what they do for that. I don't like it, Percy, though. But people are always going to overcharge me for tickets because I know I'm desperate to go to the games. And, I mean, without trying to sound cheeky, I just make the money back anyway. So, yeah, uh, Percy, I'm not too fussed. It's obviously a bit annoying, but it is what it is. However, though, for those fans out there that maybe aren't as fortunate or, or just struggling to get to go anywhere again, really, thankfully, I can go quite a lot of them with my own ticket. But, yeah, uh, it's sad to say, but it's something that's going to continue to happen. It happens all the time, especially the demand for Newcastle United. Now, it's something that's going to continue to happen. But, anyway, I thought I'd finish things off there. Let me know what your thoughts are down below on everything in this video. Really, quite a lot to talk about. And thank you for your support, as always. There should be a video up tomorrow. And Thursday, as I said, no shields away in the semi-final of the Youth Cup. Come on, lads. Let's get it done. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next one.